Welcome to this Tutor to You Criminology topic video for WJEC Applied Criminology Level 3. In this video, we're going to look at Assessment Criteria 2.2 on Individualistic Theories of Criminality, focusing on Social Learning Theory. So far in this series on Individualistic Theories of Crime, we've looked at Psychodynamic Theories and Personality Theories, and now we're looking at Learning Theories. Learning theories vary based upon how they perceive individuals learn behaviour. While some learning theories suggest we learn behaviour through reinforcement, others examine how we learn through observation and reinforcement. One such theory is social learning theory. Social learning theories are based upon an individual copying or imitating the behaviour of another person through a process known as modelling. Individuals will witness other people performing the behaviour and perceive that behaviour to be socially desirable. This is referred to as vicarious learning. Social learning theory is particularly associated with the work of Albert Bandura, and more specifically his study referred to as the Bobo doll study. In this study, Bandura aimed to discover the impact of young children being exposed to adults modelling violent behaviour towards a Bobo doll. A Bobo doll is an inflatable clown doll that when pushed over falls and rises back up again. Bandura found that when children observed adults acting violently towards the Bobo doll, they would imitate this behaviour when they were given the opportunity to do so. In Bandura's experiment, children observed an adult of either the same sex or opposite sex interacting with the Bobo doll. Then they were given the opportunity to interact with the doll themselves. Bandura's research tested 36 boys and 36 girls between the ages of 3 and 6, all of whom were part of the Stanford University nursery. They were split into three different groups. One group who observed an aggressive model, that is, an adult who acted aggressively towards the Bobo doll. A second group, where the model acted non-aggressively towards the Bobo doll. And a third or control group, where there was no modelling behaviour displayed. Bandura then instructed the children to play in the room where the Bobo doll was present, and found that there was more physical aggression from the children towards the doll if they had observed an aggressive role model interacting with the Bobo doll in the first place. Whilst both males and females acted aggressively, if there had been a male role model present in the observation, girls displayed less physical anger if a female model had been observed. Bandura repeated his experiment at a later date and found that rewarding the model for aggressive behaviour led to greater levels of aggression in children. This vicarious reinforcement was more likely to see children copying that behaviour than those who simply observed the model behaving aggressively towards the Bobo doll. Whilst in the first experiment Bandura had established observational learning, in his second experiment, he also established that vicarious reinforcement led to increased aggression in the children. Simply put, children were more likely to act aggressively if they saw somebody being rewarded for acting aggressively. In doing so, the children were clearly expecting to be rewarded for acting aggressively. But how can we apply this to criminal behaviour? Well, Bandura's study suggested that if people observe criminal behaviour, they may normalise this behaviour and then imitate it. This is particularly the case if they believed that they were going to be rewarded for imitating that behaviour. Applying this to wider society, we can see that people are more likely to imitate criminal behaviour if they observe it from their family or friends, and even more so if they see the rewards of that behaviour. However, Bandura's study does fail to take into account that there were no consequences of attacking the Bobo doll. But if people do commit crime, there are consequences. A flaw in Bandura's research is that people see people being punished for the crimes that they have committed, 
and this would make them less likely to commit crime. One of the strengths of Bandura's study is that it proposes that criminality and other behaviours can be learned directly from watching other people who commit crime and observing them receive rewards. And this has been seen in Sutherland's differential association also. It could also have potential implications. If people observe others being punished for committing crime, then this may reduce the likelihood of individuals committing crime. And this has applications for the prevention of crime. A second strength of Bandura's research is that it used scientific research methods. It manipulated variables and it used control groups to measure behaviours against. Bandura was able to apply these behaviours to the study of aggression because of the use of those control groups where no aggression was present. It helped to demonstrate that there was a cause and effect behind the aggressive behaviour. However, Bandura's research was not without its limitations. Critics have argued that the explanation was deterministic, which means it assumes that we have no free will over our behaviour, that we will blindly copy what we see, particularly if we think we're going to be rewarded. A second limitation of Bandura's study is that it fails to explain how people who have not witnessed crimes could commit crime. Furthermore, it fails to explain why those who have witnessed crimes and seen the rewards of crime do not commit crime.